I think if he were given the the right uh, Batman film, it would have been a great, you know, Bruce Wayne. Austin three sixteen says I just. The seventh annual Royal Rumble took place January twenty second, nineteen ninety four, at the Civic Center. The nineteen ninety four was one of those. Royal Rumble events that over delivered in uh, downtime for WWF 994, 993, 995 wasn't uh, you know money making years for the World Wrestling Federation, but on the occasion, especially in 994, the pair per views I believed at times over delivered, and this specific Royal Rumble event produced very memorable moments, including when. Owen Hart turned on his brother Bret Hart during their tag team title match between the Quebecers when Owen Hart, to quote Owen Hart, famously kicked Bret Hart's leg out of his leg. Very memorable. Owen Hart had major heat following this. When he entered the Royal Rumble later on, immediately he was booed and this would get Kickstart, so to speak, a tremendous feud between him and Bret Hart. Another very memorable moment happened during the casket match for the WWF Championship between The Undertaker and defending WWF Champion Yoko Zuna. The Undertaker just looked incredible here, went over very strong when a number it took a number of wrestlers, including Diesel, Bam Bam Bigelow, Tenru, and numerous others to help Yokozuna retain his title and get The Undertaker into the casket. On commentary during the entire Royal Rumble event was the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, whom I think was very good at this show and put over this whole segment that is ridiculous looking back, over strong. I remember I was very young at the time and all the kids spoke about you know, that ones that were into wrestling was, what on earth happened to The Undertaker? What happened to The Undertaker? I'm not even sure how to describe what happened to him. He was put into the casket and then um, everything went dark in the arena and he like rose from the dead. Um, it, it was very bizarre. It was We had never seen anything quite like it. In the WWF at the time, um, but very memorable segment. Undertaker was out until SummerSlam following this. He had an injury in real life. Paul Bear was also excellent throughout this whole segment. So we've had two very memorable moments, and then we get to the Royal Rumble, which over delivered. This was one of the greatest Royal Rumble matches ever, the 994 Royal Rumble. You had Diesel at the start eliminating people. Left, right, and center, very memorable spot. This had never been done in Royal Rumbles before. Someone just dominating. <clears throat> Bam Bam Bigelow putting a great shift. I loved how he never just got clotheslined out or thrown out. It, it, it took, you know, he, he got thrown into the corner, then a backflip over the corner, and then got a clothesline out. I liked little things like that. I think this was one of his best performances in a match on a pair per view. Lex Luger came in, he was one of the co-winners of the Royal Rumble match. He came in pretty hot, and, you know, reminded me a little bit like how Hulk Hogan used to run into the Royal Rumbles. Not quite at the same level, but was still, you know, it was, it was great to see him enter. And I'm not his biggest fan. Bret Hart, he came back into this match following his leg injury previously. And he sold it well. You did not think he was going to show up. You certainly didn't think he was going to go on to win this match. And he did with Lex Luger. And Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. This was the first pay-per-view where like, Shawn Michaels has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. He put on a hell of a... I would say he put on a better performance in this Royal Rumble match than he did the Royal Rumble matches that he won. Throughout, you were like... And his hair was looking fantastic as a side note. I want hair like that. I'm trying my best. Anyways, he it was a struggle to get him out. And when he like when he finally did go out, he was like, oh my goodness, he's actually out. He's actually out. 
and it came down to Hart and Luger and uh, for only the second time in Royal Rumble history uh, both men went out at the same time however in the 994 Royal Rumble there was two men declared the winner they couldn't make up their minds at the time and uh, for the first time and I guess probably the last time ever there was a co-winners of the Royal Rumble in a Royal Rumble match and event in my opinion that over delivered. The 10th Wrestlemania took place on March 20th 1994 back where it originally took place Madison Square Garden. Wrestlemania 10 featured the greatest opening match to any Wrestlemania when Owen Hart took on his brother Bret Hart in a very solid match. Um, I actually prefer their steel cage match they had a couple of months later at SummerSlam but this opening Wrestlemania encounter proved that Owen Hart was one hell of a wrestler and Bret the Hitman Hart, Bret the Hitman Hart lost actually in this match which was which was also a nice shock to see. You didn't often see Bret Hart lose cleanly during this time, so it was a refreshing res result and uh, put Owen Hart on the map even more. In one of the most iconic matches in World Wrestling Federation or wrestling general history, Shawn Michaels became Mr. WrestleMania here when he put on a wrestling clinic with Razor Ramon. In the first pay-per-view ladder match and still one of the most or the most iconic ladder matches this was breathtaking at the time i remember hearing the people talking about this match when it first aired um just incredible if i could go back in time and watch it without knowing the result I think it's just one of the, without doubt, one of the greatest matches in wrestling history. After the controversial finish to the 1994 Royal Rumble, we had two wrestlers going to WrestleMania to challenge for the WWF Championship, one being Lex Luger, whom failed to defeat Yokozuna, thus Yokozuna retaining his WWF Championship in the seventh match of Wrestlemania and in the main event he took on Bret Hart and uh, like I've said previously Bret Hart could pull out a great match with just about anybody but he really couldn't do it with Yokozuna so one of the best Wrestlemanias of all time the main event was a dud great moment seeing Bret Hart become champion again but this match was quite terrible. The second annual King of the Ring took place on June 19th in Baltimore, Maryland. In the middle of the card was the WWF Championship match which featured newly crowned Intercontinental Champion Diesel challenging Bret Hart for the big title. This was an outstanding match Involved at ringside was Jim Neidhart who just returned to the WWF. Shawn Michaels with Diesel. There was a lot of chasing going around the ring. Jim Neidhart chasing after Shawn Michaels. Both getting involved in this match. Fantastic matchup between Bret Hart and Diesel. And uh, the first of three really great wrestling matches between these two. I would say this maybe was their best out of all three. Um, even better than their Survivor Series encounter uh, just a year on a year on and a bit from now uh, th 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 this was a very fun match to watch the MVP of the show Owen Hart won the second pay-per-view King of the Ring crown just like his brother did the previous year he won by defeating Tatanka Followed by a quick victory over the 1 2 3 kid and defeated Razor Ramon in the final with some help from Jim Neidhart, who turned bad guy during the show. It came as a shock as he came in the show with Brett the Hitman Harp, 
And you would never expect Jim Neihart turning bad guy here, but he did. And it was it was quite the shock at the time. And Jim Neihart was just, I thought he was a great bad guy. Very, very funny and great chemistry with Owen Hart. Overall, I enjoyed this King of the Rings show. Owen Hart was exceptional at the show. Brett and Diesel had a classic. But the main event really just was dreadful. Rowdy Roddy Piper returned to the ring for the first time since WrestleMania 8, in my calculations, to take on Jerry the King Lawler. Now the build up to this match looked fun. I enjoyed seeing Piper's promos when he was in his home and stuff. Jerry Lawler always gold on the mic, but th this match stunk. The 1994 SummerSlam took place August 29th in Chicago, Illinois. One entertaining match on the card was Razor Ramon challenging for the Intercontinental Championship against Diesel. These two always had great in-ring chemistry together. Shawn Michaels was there with a basketball player that uh, escapes my name, or was it a football player? I'm not sure. I'm very not familiar with real American sports, but um, the guy they brought in from the football or the basketball was very good here. Very entertaining stuff outside ring two with Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels by 1994, he didn't even need to be wrestling. He just needed to be outside and he still brought a lot to the product. Excellent work here from all four involved. One of the greatest steel cage match, in fact the greatest steel cage match ever, took place at SummerSlam 1994. It was between Bret Hart and Owen Hart for the WWF Championship. The wrestling involved in this, the drama involved, all the antics with the steel cage, an awesome finish. And then all the drama afterwards involving the Hart family, including the British Bulldog and his wife and Jim Neidhart, all that stuff with Jim Neidhart clotheslining uh, Diana and the British Bulldog over the, the railings outside. Loved all those touches. Then Jim Neidhart locking himself and Owen Hart in the steel cage to uh, attack Bret Hart some more. It was just, it was, it had everything, this matchup. Everything I love about wrestling was in this match on display. Five stars all the way. Overall, SummerSlam 994 was one of the greatest SummerSlams ever. However, the main event was a major dud. In saying that, though, the main event pitted The Undertaker versus The Undertaker, but enough of that. It was great to see the return of the real Undertaker. I loved all the the skits segments leading up to his return. I loved how he was written off, even though it was, you know, OTT. I feel like with a character like The Undertaker, you need something OTT to write him off. It can't just be like a, 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 a normal injury. This is The Undertaker. This is the dead man. So great to see him return here. Paul Bear Gold is all, always maybe a bit too much, actually, at this specific SummerSlam, but... Paul Bear always brings out the best in the, the early version of The Undertaker. SummerSlam 94 as a whole, a, you know, a solid, solid show. The 8th annual Survivor Series took place November 23rd, 1994 in San Antonio, Texas, Freeman Coliseum. The opening match was a traditional Survivor Series match and the best one out of the three of the night. It featured a team consisting of Diesel, Shawn Michaels, Double J, Owen Hart and Jim Neidhart taking on a team captained by Razor Ramon. It featured the British Bulldog, the 123 Kid, Fatu and Sione, whom was formerly known as the Barbarian. This really showcased Diesel as a dominant force. He eliminated Everybody, with the exception of Razor Ramon and the opposition, opposition team, <laughs> really put him over. Just like at the Royal Rumble, very dominant. And I loved how it was booked. 
and there was also a falling out. The honeymoon is over, as Gorilla Monsoon would say, when Shawn Michaels accidentally super kicked uh, Diesel in the face, and their team was no more. This would uh, be the start of a feud leading up to next year's WrestleMania. Once again, the WWF Championship was in the middle of the card as Bret the Hitman Hart defended his title against Mr. Bob Backlund. It was the next generation, a new generation, but here we are. Um, I love the dramatics with uh, Stu and Helen Hart getting involved in the end and throwing in a towel after Owen Hart was acting up, crying, looking emotional for his brother Bret. But a uh, pretty boring match overall, specifically. I mean, how long was... You could have probably watched the Titanic uh, by the time Bret Hart got into the sleeper hold, cross face chicken, whatever the hell it was called, move of Bob Backlund's. And uh, the Titanic film would have been finished by the time uh, Helen Hart threw in towel. Just, you know, a bit, a bit too far too long, all that. The main event featured a rematch from the Royal Rumble, a casket match once again between Yokozuna and The Undertaker. By this point, I'm just done. Um, Yokozuna has been booked so horribly um, for most of 993 and 994. I can't take him serious anymore. He can never defeat anyone without shenanigans, it seems. And it shouldn't be the case. He's He looks... And, and and should be booked like a, the monster that he looks. The Undertaker again, his revenge here. And Chuck Norris was the outside referee. Chuck Norris got an easy payday. 1994 was a solid year overall for WWF pair per views. Four out of five pair per views ranged from seven out of ten to nine out of ten. And fifth place Survivor Series, which got a six out of ten. I like part. You know, parts of it were really good. Fourth place, King of the Ring. It was number one last time. Third place, The Royal Rumble. Second place, SummerSlam. And in first place, one of the most memorable and best WrestleManias ever, WrestleMania 10. <laughs> 